today's a big day. So today's a big day because today I'm directing a music video. So the band is Arkells and I've luckily made a few videos with them and even won an award. Uh, and our amazing directors, Shane and Mark, who pulled this thing off. I'm sitting back there. So this all happened pretty quick. Uh, just two weeks ago, I got a text message from Max, the lead singer, and the manager, manager Ash, that just said, Mark, Mark, hi, hi. Question for you, re music video. We have this song coming out Thursday. It's about the Champagne Boys pub crawl. It's a group of like, 10 to 12 guys. And we're trying to think of a concept that is doable to shoot. Give it a listen. So I listen to the song and it's very much a narrative song. It's about a pub crawl that Max and his friends do every year. Obviously the easy way to go is, oh, let's recreate that. So that's where my mind went first. Given that it's COVID, we can't get together. We can't shoot groups of people. So the quick idea was like, how can we recreate that event, that night, that mood during COVID? 20 minutes later, I replied to Max and just said, what if we made cutouts of everyone in a bunch of different scenes and recreated these moments with all the people, but they were all cutouts except for the band. So my original idea was make it this magical night that's almost similar to the scene from Home Alone where Kevin has to act like his house is, is full so the robbers don't come and rob his house. So anyway, there's a lot that's happened in the last two weeks. I realized that I didn't really break it down the day I shot that, which was the day of the music video. So I'm gonna do a quick summary right now. First, I made a test edit where I just slapped the song on a timeline and put text on screen describing what I saw for every section of the video, even highlighting what I wasn't sure about. Next, I met with Max and Ash to refine the concept and we decided against using fans and friends as cutouts and instead it would only be the band members. Max, Ash, and I did a location scout, and it all came down to rock, paper, scissors. One, two, three. Oh. Max lost, but we still got the venue. I hired a DP, also known as a cinematographer. Next, I drove to Hamilton and worked with photographer Nathan Nash to take photos of the band. And a special guest. <laughs> we did a test print of Tony, and the scale was too big, so we adjusted and did another test. Next, the DP and I did a tech scout, which is essentially another location scout, but this time we got more technical. We finally selected all the images and sent them out to be printed. Next, I refined my test edit using those photos, which would help me and others know which cutouts were needed and when. And the last thing I did was make my shot list. So today's the day and we uh, it's a night shoot, so we're waiting for the sun to go down, which is around five o'clock. So we're basically shooting from five till midnight. I have a seven hour window to try to get everything we need. This should be fun, so let's see how today goes. Simon, they love you. Zachy, big hug. That's for me. Thanks so much. Thank you. So the location is a bar at uh, Queen and Augusta in Toronto. So there's the bar, right there. Here's the shot list. I just broke it down by like time code of where it's happening in the song. It's kind of all ordered. It's now one o'clock. Hopefully I'm back in this car driving home at 1 a.m. One of the main reasons I wanted the video shoot to not go long was because I didn't think that it had to, but also because I was flying to Florida the next morning and wanted to get some sleep. The cutouts arrived on the day of the shoot from the printing house, so we opened them up. Okay, okay. They were a little on the small side. I mean, he is six foot four. But I knew we'd make them work, so they were great. Max walked in just as we were revealing our cutout of Julian. Hi, this is Julian. <laughs> And he also happened to be wearing a cool jacket and had a cool story about how he acquired it. All right, I'll tell you. So we were on a walk this morning and we were thinking- Is it this morning thing? This morning. We're thinking about, okay, where can we go? We go to Roots, we go somewhere fancy. We go somewhere just like, what's open today? Sure. And then Ash says, oh, we should just use that guy's jacket. There's a guy walking by in this jacket. And I go, oh, wait a second. I know that guy, it's Liam. He went to McMaster with me. We love that jacket. He's like, want it? And he just put it literally off his off his shoulders, right here. Yo, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, that's how life goes, friends. <laughs> so it's just before five o'clock. We haven't started rolling yet, but things are moving uh, pretty quickly inside. Uh, let's go see what it looks like.
the bar was taking shape and things were looking good inside, but for the first shot, we went outside. Okay, Max, we're about to roll. What do you, uh, any thoughts? First take. I, I'm, a, I'm a one take guy. Uh, I mean, what time is it right now? It is... Um, 6.30. 6.30, we'll be done by like 6.45 probably. This song's four minutes. We'll get some extra coverage and then we'll all be ready to go home. All right, let's go. Yeah. As a director, it's sometimes wise for the first shot to be an easy one so you can quickly move from the first setup to the next setup and it kind of sets the tone and the pace for the rest of the shoot. Sadly, I did a lot of takes for the first scene and it kind of slowed us down, but ultimately I'm happy because the takes we used were the last takes. Every year we make a promise. We shot some quick things of Max setting up inside before heading back out to do our Home Alone inspired shot. Cause the night will bring us to our knees. One, two, three, four! Max, give us an update. Well, we're about to rock. The first uh, part of the song has been shot. And we're uh, turn up the volume now. Tim's helping me have a kit. And we're ready to party. Just a quick note on directing. I think directing is about a lot of things. One of those is about having a vision. The next thing is about compromising and adapting that vision. And the third thing is about articulating and distilling that new modified vision to the other people around you so that you're all on the same page and moving in the same direction. Here's an example of me trying to do that with Max. Great, for this one, as you bust through and you just look, it'll move into all that stuff. Then make way over after, like, oh, right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I realized that I may not have explained myself perfectly to Max, so I tried to clarify what was in my head and why I was asking him to pause when he came through the door. So, just for context, that look is what you know, cut, 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 cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Which is essentially because I wanted to cut to the cutouts when he pops inside. Now I'll just do a quick montage to get us through the night because we were running behind. Sometimes with bad, there is good. Uh, the bad was that we were running really late. So it's three in the morning, it's 3.20 and I'm still here on the video shoot in the middle of Queen Street. And we're not done, sadly, but we're close. But the good news is that while we were inside, it had rained outside. And now the sidewalks and road reflected the lights and it looked awesome. One of the big shots I had planned was a one -er, which is essentially one long take without any cuts. This shot involved Max walking down the sidewalk into the bar, passing specifically placed cutouts before getting to the stage. That took a few takes, but we got it. Camera. And it's like clockwork. My only regret is that I didn't shoot it in slow-mo. By this time, it was even later at night, so there was nobody on the streets, and that's when we went outside and shot Max performing in the middle of Queen Street. And sorry to Max, I know it was cold and he was only wearing a t-shirt, so thank you and I apologize. The last shot of the night was the last shot of the video, which had the cutouts on their knees outside. What I was saying earlier about having a vision, you need to be able to adapt that vision. So at the end of the video, something accidental happened where the cutouts fell down. It was running late, I wanted to speed things along, so I, I kind of jumped in a little too early. I didn't allow that organic moment to just be a moment. That's an error. Just let something be what it is, not always what you intended it to be, and sometimes there's magic in between. So the video was done and all I had to do was say three words. Hey, that's a wrap. I gotta yell it inside. Way to go. Thank you all. So the video was shot. It was in the can or at least on a hard drive. I flew to Florida the very next morning on no sleep and next was the editing. So yeah, this is my editing station. Uh, could be worse. Not working off much sleep, hence the shades. Because I pre-edited the video, I knew exactly where I wanted all the shots to go anyway so that Edit happened really quick. Initial review, they liked it. They wanted to get more feedback, but I think they were pretty happy. After a few minor changes, I sent a V2 back. The video is essentially done. The video got approved 
and it was time to color the video. And just to officially say hi to Crystal. Hi, Crystal. Hey. By the end of today, the video is gonna be done. That will mean three weeks for this whole process from the first text message to say, let's make a music video to it being finalized and delivered. So that was the making of Pub Crawl. It was an awesome whirlwind experience. Just before the video drops in 12 minutes. All right, see everybody. Thank you, Mark. I'm so happy that I was involved. Uh, thanks to Max, thanks to Ash, and thank you to all the people that were involved. And I hope people liked the video, and I hope you liked looking at it behind the scenes. Thank you. Bye. In three seconds, everyone's making a comment. Here we go, boys. Let's go for reals. <laughs>